get all their cream off the top and then they bankrupt them condo off builders or whatever their developments are and they, they shove it all back to the banks that Fannie Mae buys them back out but they've already walked with their money. Okay. Let me make sure it's I understand you. Like boom, it's not like the boom that we had through the early 2000s because the oh. ordinary person did not get the boom. It was the, now the, the, it's the, the wealthy, wealthy are booming and then they're, then they're bankrupting these LLC companies and dumping it back to the banks and uh, Freddie Mac okay. is picking up the tab. Okay, so Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, in your opinion, look like they're benefiting as a result of the, um, how does that work with the LLCs again? We got a certain type of noise. Is that someone it, typing or something? That's electric. I, I muted it. Uh, no, the LLC is like a corporation or a company. Okay? It's a limited liability. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a LLC. Um, well, they're just borrowing lots of money. And all these corporations right now are borrowing money from the banks and wherever they can get it, and they're buying back their own stocks, too. Right, right exactly. That's true. Head. This ain't no boom for the ordinary person. Okay, I got you. I agree with you there. We're on the same page, exactly. Right. This is the thing for the top bracket. This okay, is so that easy, bracket. yeah, that easy money garbage that yeah. um, the the feds are, are are doing. It's 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 going right into the pockets of the big five ten corporations, and as you mentioned, they're issuing debt and and buying back stock because they don't have any ideas of what to do with the money except. Except for, for their own things that, that are going to benefit them. Hey, can it's you guys hear me? They got to buy back their stocks to make their Yeah, go ahead, wait. Uh, just a second, so, William. I'm sorry. Go ahead. They have to buy back their stocks to make their company. The corporation looks good. And oh, okay. And all buying it back, but all that's going to come to head to it. So it's, it's financial engineering. That's what you call financial engineering, right? Yeah. You, you, you have... Yeah, you have nothing you know, better to do with the money <laughs> but buy back your own money. stock. Here's something uh -huh. that I've, I've really thought about, and I hadn't talked about this with anybody because I was just trying to figure it out. Yeah, you know, I, I remember growing up in the 60s and 70s, and I'm sure you did too. Yeah, and, well, more than mainly the 70s. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, them, I didn't, then we're you know, we went barefooted in the summer, you know. And right. then we only got shoes in the school time. And uh, right. and I'm telling you that that's the way it was for the majority of the, you know, in Oklahoma. Okay. I mean, or a place, but I'm sure that's nationwide. But what I've been wondering is everybody's always well, always been yelling, you know, give to the uh, you know, the rich, you know, help out the poor, you know, bring up the substantial living. How do we know that they haven't done that by producing free money? By, I mean, say, by producing free money. Right, uh-huh. You know? how, how do we know that they haven't done what? What was that? They that haven't part? tried to to uh, to bring our economics up to make it easier on us. Yeah. By, by flooding the market with money to pay people more and and try to make the living a little bit easier. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's and that's quantitative. Um, um, smoke that, that's quantitative, quantitative easing, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, because you can't just go into somebody and give them a million dollars that'll destroy their lives. Oh, sure, so they sure. Gradually well, I'd love my life to get to destroyed. That. Go ahead. To a certain degree. And, well, and you know, uh, uh, not <laughs> only that, Robots are taking our jobs over, which is better because oh, I gotta unmute you, Electric. If he's talking, was you talking? I unmute you. Yeah, I said if a million dollars will destroy your life, well, I'd love my life to get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the difference. I mean, you can handle a million dollars electricity, but you go across, you know, the street or somewhere down the road, and they would know what to do with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now that, but that was interesting in terms of what you said, Smokey, because if, if, the, if the Federal Reserve and the central bankers are printing out billions and trillions of dollars to stimulate the economy because nobody uh, can find good jobs, no one can afford to go to school, 
and 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 you could only buy so many iPhones and 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 spend so much money at the retailers before you know it starts affecting your budget. Then I guess that's that's it, that's like an act act of desperation, right? When you go literally go fly around printing out money and trying to put it into the hands of people in order to stimulate the economy, right? Well, yeah, but see, that comes back to butter's in a butt. When butter used to cost a dollar fifty a pound, two dollars a pound, and now it's six dollars and something. Exactly, stuff. exactly. Um, but what, oh, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What else do these idiots do if they screwed up the economy so badly by by continually printing money? And now, when when you try to when the economy should be picking up on its own, because initially that was the idea. You, you, you stimulate the economy, you jump start it like a car with the cables on the battery. The car, the car, the bat, the, the engine gets going, and then you drive and, and, it, and it charges, and you're, you're fine, right? I guess. Why, why are we recording this? Well, I want to say it again. Is this oh, for said, a show or something? No. Nah, yeah, I want nah. other. <laughs> I, don't I, maybe. Like other, I would like people to get an idea. You know what? What the what? What? What it's like to have a discussion, a real discussion about some things that hopefully some you know we can relate to. Is, if you if you if you want me to take you off uh, for you know while you talk about certain things, I'll, I'll uh, stop the recording. Well, I don't, no, I don't know what you're using it for, but that's fine with me. No, no, no. We just want we just want everyone to know that despite all of the BS that typically goes on with just you know, pretending like there's no problem, la 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 da da, this and that and the other. We want people to know there are some real issues going on, and some people are really suffering. Some people are really hurting, and 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 as you as you pointed out, there are some real things going on that are affecting our wallets, and and I think people deserve to know the truth. Right. That's been going on for hundreds of years. You're okay, but uh, yeah, I, some mm, people are doing really well with the high price gold. I'm just they, they're what, doing really well with what? What was that? The high got, price of gold. The high price of gold, right? They're doing really well because of the high price of gold. I would be one of those. Okay, that that applies to other commodities as well, right? Yeah, you just maybe to a slightly lesser degree. It's like old times, ain't it, electricity? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what my understanding is is that um, it's every seven years they uh, they crash the economy uh, during okay. the year of the Shemitah, is what I I believe it's called. Um, what do you, you call back, that again? Repeat that word again. Uh, the year of the Shemitah, I believe. Right. So, uh, 2008, there was an eco- economic crash. Okay. 2015. 2001, um, and then obviously just keep doing math backwards, but uh, it's a pretty consistent pattern of boom and bust. Um, and you're right that the printing the money does uh, damage us, but not because it's uh, inflating costs. It's because the it's artificially choosing winners and losers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because if everything rises, then the prices should rise with the income, so it would be a, a net zero game. But the problem is there's artificial manipulation within the economy that will alter variables. Some would argue that it's beneficial, some would argue that it's not. Uh, but there's definitely a level of control there which uh, is directly opposed to the laissez-faire capitalistic ideals. We all- I think uh, some of the arguments Martin Schrady was making about uh, all asset classes depreciating over time, that's actually... Can you turn your volume up a little, Carl? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm actually in a hotel currently. and got to, kind of, you know, stay on the deal. Oh, Cole, you know, we, 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 I don't think we're going to know who you are. Uh, if you can you speak with your normal your your normal voice or or maybe adjust that thing a little bit because you're just a little bit too much electronic a little bit. I, I think what you're saying is very important, but it's really difficult I, to make I, it out. I invited him to the room. Okay, like that's Christy. cool. And uh, we go back quite a ways. He might be a new name here. Uh, 
Okay, that that was cold, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, right. You cold? You there? Maybe he's adjusting. Maybe better if I type. Oh uh, yeah, I'm in a hotel currently. Just didn't wanna, you know, okay. speak up too much. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Right. So yeah, it's uh, it's the economy. Right? We've got the uh, the Boston boom, and the cycles. But uh, when we were talking about, is it getting better or worse? I think the power is just shifting. Um, okay. Okay, now could you elaborate a little bit on um, electricity? When you say the powers are shifting, give us a better idea in terms of where it's where 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 it ultimately is going in, in your opinion. And make sure I understand. Right. So one of the interesting things about today's economy is that people are starting to compete directly with corporations, right? Like the taxi cab service, for example, is getting disrupted by Airbnb or by a. Uh, um, Uber, by the, the Ubers. hotel service is getting disrupted by Airbnb. Uh, pretty much, it's it's hard to find an example of a, an instance where a corporation is not competing directly with individuals, right? Even uh, even major media is now competing with uh, YouTube celebrities. So it, it's almost like uh, it's changing in that. Um, the rules of the game are no longer what they used to be, where it took hundreds of people in an office cooperating together to do one specific thing. Now you can get pretty much one person who wants to go out and directly into the marketplace, the consumers. Okay, now let me let me address that because I want to make sure I got, I'm, I'm, I got a good understanding of ultimately how that affects um, my wallet if I were an Uber driver, because Uber is a corporation, right? Right, right. And the drivers are independent contractors for the most part, right? Right. Okay, now, we're, 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 we're looking at a situation where it seems like, as you pointed out, a lot of the wealth is channeled into hands of, 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 of companies or banks or whatever that are determined to be winners, right? As compared to taking it away from those who someone determined that they're going to be losers, right? That's how you pick winners and losers. Yeah, well, that just creates a bubble because eventually um, inefficient systems will collapse. Okay, that's a good point. Now, if we have, I'm just trying to make sure I understand how the Uber fits into it because that looks like that gives uh, people a lot more opportunity to find a job to make some money, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now... My question or my, my concern is those drivers are making a lot less than the people who invested in Uber who run that corporation because those drivers, those independent contractors, they're not competing against um, the corporation. The corporation is determining the fate of the drivers, right? Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not okay when you're when you make the analogy of individuals are competing better, which I know where you're going, and I understand that perfectly. But but, um, but the problem is this: that analogy, I don't know if that's if that really illustrates how individuals are competing against corporations because uh, the people who run Uber, uh, Uber, who invested in Uber originally, they're multi-billionaires, but the people who are driving those cars are deemed contractors and they make tips if they're lucky and they're dependent upon that company to to allow them just to make ends meet right you're not going to make you're not going to end up wealthy as an uber driver right well it depends on if you're uh, operating somewhere that's got surge pricing though you know you can have really tremendous fares for a short period of time when there's very high demand uh, conversely, though, when Uber does that, it kind of removes the uh, free market aspect, and uh, you end up with kind of a fixed rate, and drivers aren't really competing against each other. They're just paying whatever you know going rate is as a passenger, and Uber takes their cut, and then the drivers you know get as much as, uh, as Uber allows them. But uh, exactly, really yeah, that's that, that's a problem. Yeah, you have surge right. pricing. Exactly, surge pricing. Is, is the corporation's attempt at taking advantage of those particular situations where you have a major event or something like that 
and they say, look, we have the transportation back and from that airport, that hotel, that football game or whatever. And, 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 and we're going to determine what the, ultimately what that rate structure is going to look like. Right. Yeah. Right. So the thing is, is Uber isn't necessarily patentable. And there's already a competition that's called Lyft. And uh, essentially, there's no reason why a third, fourth, or even fifth person could enter that space. Um, and it's a really pretty thin margin because the idea is to, uh, to compete with a taxi cab service. So there could be a scenario where there's multiple apps and it pretty much just drives it to where the corporations are just making cents on the dollar per person, uh, which is fine because it's a lot of people, but uh, their overhead is really low because it's all digital. Right, and the, because the logistic, logistics experts are ultimately the people who run those organizations because this is all about allocation of resources in a timely manner, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so th does it, doesn't that mean <laughs> doesn't that mean that the drivers are squeezed significantly uh, for their time? I wouldn't really say it takes a logistics expert anymore. It takes someone running Gruskell's algorithm, which is like public. <laughs> you know, this navigation stuff is uh, not the hardest. Out there. It's not what? We'll say that again. I say it's not the hardest out there. It really doesn't take an expert to run this anymore. Like taxi dispatch, Uber, anything similar. Well, well, those are yeah. the people ultimately are making the big money. The people who can say, "Look, they we are, got we got a number of bicycles, we got a number of cabs, we have a number of a really difficult job from a data perspective. They do a job. Well, well, well I think that's easier to say. <laughs> that's easier to say than done. I don't have a fifty billion dollar capitalization for my company. So uh, well, it takes money. To make money. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm just wondering about the network effect also because sometimes if you get that presence out there and you have the you're your first to market and everybody recognizes you as the, comp the go-to company, that network effect is really going to make a big difference as far as who's going to be the winners and losers, right? True. I do think there's a lot more to brand recognition necessarily than there is to the platform itself allocating resources. Efficiently. Exactly, right. I recommend Smoky Mountain that you open a Bitcoin account only using the Bitcoin client and you don't use any third party software or anything web based. Well, what about uh, what about Coinbase? No, fuck. They haven't been hacked, have they? Not yet. <laughs> How much? <time? laughs> Well, I, I think that's an I think that's another issue. If we have to wait for Coinbase to get hacked before we try to determine whether or not there's a problem or not, then, then we're going to be probably waiting a while. Yeah, I think they got... going to. I think it's inevitable. It's just a question of when. Oh, sure. No, no, no. Look, if we look at the clock long enough, there's a lot of different things that are going to happen eventually. But uh, you, you remember know, when everyone was saying, "Store your bitcoins in Mount Gox." <laughs> And hey, look, I mean, I'll admit I lost some bitcoins to uh, good old Mark Carples, but uh, don't put all your eggs in one well, basket. I th wait, 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 wait. Mount Gox was was not the most ideal business model. That was the first company, so we didn't have a choice to go with Mount Gox because they were the first one doing an exchange, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if Mount Gox, look, Mount Gox was based, to come, based upon a card game or something. Yeah, exactly. The magic of okay. gathering exchange. Yeah, before they yeah I, I don't know. I don't know if that's. I don't know <laughs> if we need to. Uh, uh, we don't. Well, I don't know if we, we need to paint Mount Gox as as the ideal model of of what ultimately an exchange can look like if they had to transition from a. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> I never trust an exchange to work like a bank, and honestly, don't trust a bank if you want your bitcoins to be. Actually, can we stop recording while I talk about how you make Bitcoin really, really? Oh, stupid? sure, sure, right? Okay. Yeah.